one day um, I'm thinking when I go up there maybe I can take some of these films and maybe a camera like this an 8mm camera and maybe some projectors and maybe I can do some shows up there upstairs and maybe we can all have a laugh and get together and enjoy some of these wonderful movies again who knows I can only try and hope maybe one day I'll take them up there Five years ago I was about nine or ten years old and a friend of mine was having a party when I was at school and uh, he said to me come over we're gonna have a party and he got this super 8 projector and he had a screen about six foot across he opened the screen and he showed a one reel extract of um, Ray Harrison's seventh voyage Sinbad only lasted about ten minutes just showing all the best bits and I just fell in love with it and it just started with that and it went on and on I just could not give it up and I thought it was a wonderful hobby and there's some magic about projecting real film Thank you sir, your film is ready you know, I've been archiving film for about 45 years now. When you project 35 mil, it just looks gorgeous. There's some sort of romance to it. It's organic. I've always said it's got heart and soul. Um, and it's been around for 130 years. It works. We know nowadays it's very expensive, but um, it's quite magical, you know. Um, you, can't, you can't get the look you get from film. Digital cannot give you that at the moment. about 20 years ago they destroyed a lot of 35 mil prints and some 16 mil prints just to make room in their archives because they do take up a lot of space and the problem is before the law changed in the late 40s early 50s 51 52 and because it was on nitrate stock and it's quite flammable and I mean it gives beautiful color but um, it's a bit dangerous to handle it's just what it is sadly you know a lot of these have been lost and it's quite worrying. <laughs> As I say, we are always looking, and there's a few friends of mine, we're always looking and trying to um, rescue films and, and clean them. To me, it's not about money. It's just letting people enjoy film. Over the years, I've supplied um, very old tripods to Kate Moss. I've sold a Super 8 camera to Sir Michael Caine. I've supplied a 35mm portable projector to Warner Brothers. When you get people like that talking about your shop and going, thank you very much for keeping this alive, um, it really makes your day. It, it's quite funny in a way where things come and go when they probably invented film about 130 years ago, they probably didn't think that it was going to last this long, but it has, you know, and sometimes things have a habit of coming back, don't they? I met Ronald in 1979 and he already had a substantial collection by then and we started working together and by 1984 we felt that we had so much wonderful material that we should try and make it publicly available to people 
So we created the museum in 1984, initially as a not-for-profit company with a board of trustees, and then in 1986 we uh, got our charitable status. The Cinema Museum is based in a building that originally was the Lambeth Workhouse. And the most famous person who came in to this workhouse in 1898 was Charlie Chaplin, along with his mother Hannah and his half-brother Sidney. Amongst the material that we had in the collection were about 30 travelogue films from 1910 to 1921. We were very fortunate in that we teamed up with the Bundesarchiv in Berlin and at the Netherlands Film Museum as it was then, it's now called I, and we apl successfully applied under the Raphael Fund, uh, which was a European funding initiative. Uh, we got a sum of money which enabled us to do the preservation of these particular films because ours were originals on nitrate stock and we also produced a DVD. So in conjunction with the three archives working together we were able to um, preserve all the films that we have and the Bundesarchiv was able to digitise the copies that they had. There ain't no grace can hold my well, I think it's very interesting that quite a lot of film directors are going back to uh, filming on 35mm rather than filming digitally. Um, there are various reasons for this, I think. They feel that it's, uh, the quality is better, possibly they're more in control of the composition of the image and so forth. Um, so I think the two mediums will, con for the moment, will continue to run alongside one another. So we will get digital films made digitally and we'll get films made on film. In terms of preservation, I think there are a lot of unanswered questions. I think a lot of films will be preserved on 35mm. Um, digital is slightly more difficult because the platforms keep changing. You need to keep transferring the digital files um, and upgrading them to the latest agreed format because otherwise you'll discover in five years time that we don't have the equipment to play the digital files any longer because they become obsolete. If you could sum up in one word, because we like these sort of one word things, about film preservation, what would it be? It's essential. A very good friend of mine a few years ago, John Sullivan, in a way, he was my teacher, and we became very good friends. And he summed it up, I think. What he said was, um, what is also very important is not what we look at, but how we look at it. <laughs>